All right, this is fifth grade, module four, lesson 18. And in this lesson, we are going to be multiplying decimals. But we're not going to be just teaching our students some silly rule that they're supposed to memorize. What we're going to be doing is we're going to learn about how to multiply decimals by coming from the all the understanding that we have of fractions. And by starting with the fractions and then moving to the decimals, that's going to make the rule for multiplying decimals just pop out. And uh, it's going to be a little bit more obvious rather than just this silly thing that our students are supposed to memorize. So let's get started. So you'll notice I've got the same problem three times because I'm going to show you three ways that we can look at solving or think about solving this problem. So the first way, let's do uh, right here, this one, uh, we'll think of it like fractions. So we're going to think of 3.2 as 32 tenths times, and then we're going to think of 2.1 as 21 tenths, and now it's time for us to multiply, okay? And so we've remembered that the way you multiply is you multiply the numerators. So in this case, we're going to multiply 32 times 21. Now I'm going to save you the, the hassle of showing me showing you how to, well, no heck, let me do that real quick. So I'll just do 32 times 21. We're going to do this down here. 2, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, put a 0 down, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, and then we add, we get 600. 72. So 32 times 21 is 672, and then 10 times 10 is 100. Now 672 hundredths. Now at this point, uh, the idea would be, well, you could go over here and look at this place value chart, and you can say, well, 672 would be here, but divide by 100. Now, why are we dividing by 100? We're dividing by 100 because it says so right here. Divide by 100. So 672 hundredths. So we're going to go back over here. And when we divide by 100, that means each digit gets moved over two places. So we end up with 6.72. All right, so let's go over here and let's zoom. And so this is equal to 6.72, 6.72, or 6 and 72 hundredths is probably the, the better way of saying it. Okay, so now we're going to look at it a second way right here. Only now we're going to think of it in that label, that units of form, the story of units. So we're going to think of this 3.2 as 32 tenths. And we're going to think of 2.1 as 21 tenths. And now we're going to multiply. Now I've already shown you that 32 times 21 is 672. So we're going to get 672, but then we have to think about tenths times tenths. And tenths times tenths is hundredths. So 672 hundredths. So I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to go down here. Now, what does 672 hundredths look like? Well, 672 hundredths, and I'm going to see, let's do blue line here to separate it. So 672 hundredths means we have right here, 672 hundredths. But when you can cash in, you know, you, you can exchange every 10 hundredths counts as a tenth. And then every 10 tenths counts as a one. And so if you have a hundred hundredths, that counts as six one. So this six hundredths means we have six ones. This 70 hundredths means we have 7 tenths, and this 2 hundredths means we have 2 hundredths left over. So there's our answer, 6.72, and that's the exact answer that we knew all along. So again, I'm going to zoom out, and we're going to say, well, this 
672 hundredths is equal to 6.72, or 6 and 72 hundredths. So now we have a third and final way of thinking about this. And this third and final way is uh, one of the partial, eh, I don't know, a supplementary method that Engage New York talks about. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to think of this as 3.2 times 2.1. But I'm going to multiply this guy by 10, and I'm going to multiply this guy by 10 so that we end up with 32 times 21. All right. So now, instead of multiplying over here, I'm going to multiply over here. So I've got 32 times 21, and I'll save you the trouble of, of seeing that again, but it's, we already know it's 672. But we need to compensate for the fact that we multiplied by 10, and we multiplied by 10. So what we need to do to fix our answer is, well, we need to divide by 10. Well, that gives us 67.2, but now we've got to divide by 10 again, and that gives us 6.72. So we multiplied by 10 to turn this 3.2 into a whole number, we multiplied by 10 to turn 2.1 into a whole number, and then we multiplied. But because we multiplied, <laughs> Now we need to fix our answer by dividing. Divide by 10, divide by 10, and that gives us 6.72, or 6 and 72 hundredths. And so there we have it. We have three different ways to show that the answer is, in all three cases, 6.72. Now, you know, the thing is, we've got to think about this. Does that answer make sense? So when we look at our original problem, right here, our original problem, 3.2 times 2.1, well, let's do this in green. Well, 3.2 is about 3. 2.1 is about 2. So when we multiply to 3 times 2, we get 6. So we know our answer should be about 6. And sure enough, our answer of 6 and 72 hundredths is reasonable. It is close to our estimation, so we know we're good. So let's move on. This says to solve the problem twice. Once as a fraction and once as that unit form. We're not going to use the third method that I shared already. So let's get started. First, we're going to do it as fractions. So in fraction form, we've got 44 tenths times 32 tenths. And then we're going to um, multiply 44 times 32. And we do that down here on scratch paper, 44 times 32. So let's do that. Uh, so 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. Put a 0. And then 3 times 4 is 12, carry the 1. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So when we add that together, we get 8. 0, carry the 1, 4, 1. So it's 1,408 is our um, answer, our product. So that's going to be 1,000 is equal to 1,408 over 100 because... 10 times 10 is 100. And then what we should have uh, figured out by now and learned and seen the pattern is uh, that dividing by 100 means our answer is going to be, four, oops, not 14.8. It's going to be 14.08. And there's our answer. Now it says to do it this time using unit form. So we're going to think of this as 44 tenths and 32 tenths. And we're going to multiply. And we already know that answer is 1,408. But then we've got to do tenths times tenths. That gives us hundredths. And 1,408 
hundredths is equal to 14 and 8 hundredths, or 14.08. Now, uh, we, let's think about this. Does that answer make sense? Well, let's, let's do a little bit of estimation here. So 4.4, that's pretty close to 4. 3.2, that's pretty close to 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. So we know that our answer has to be eh, something close to 12. And sure enough, 14.08 out of all the numbers in the world, 14.08 is pretty darn close to 12. So that tells us our answer is reasonable. Now, I included this one because I thought this was intriguing. It says, solve using the standard algorithm. But then, <laughs> in my opinion, the two samples that they give you, neither of those are really the standard algorithm that you would see in 9 out of 10 textbooks. So, um, teachers, parents, um, uh, take this word standard with a grain of salt at this point because the two options that they've given you, neither of those are really standard. So uh, let your students choose which one they like the best and let them run with it on these two problems here. Um, personally, I kind of dig the fractions because fractions are my favorite. Uh, but I think this other, this unit method is equally cool. Uh, you could also use this as an opportunity to teach students that other way that I shared earlier, which is, okay, well, let's first multiply this by 10, multiply this by 10. That gives us 32 times 6. And when you multiply, you get 192. But now, because we multiplied by a 10 and multiplied by 10, that means we have to divide by 10 and then divide by 10 again. So that essentially is going to turn 192 into 1.92 because the first division of 10 would move the decimal. The second division of 10 would move the decimal. So on this slide I just shared with you because I kind of, I think this, this phrase standard algorithm is a little funny given that neither of your choices are standard. And the last problem in this one, uh, I'm not going to actually complete it, uh, but a swimming pool at a park measures um, 9.75 meters by 7.2 meters. Find the area of the swimming pool. So what does that mean? That means you're going to multiply 9.75 times 7.2. And in my I don't know, I think this one would probably, I would probably do the, oh, fraction method. 975 over 100 times 72 over 10. Now, this 975 times 72, I'm going to save you the, the watching me do it. It's 70,200 over... And then this is a thousand. And when we divide by a thousand, that means we know that the digits are all going to move to the right. And the decimal is going to look like it's going to move to the left. But the digits are going to move to the right three places. So we're going to end up with 70.2. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about that place value chart, right? And that place value chart is here's your tenths, here's your decimal. Here's your ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and so 70,200. And then when we divide by a thousand here, that means each of these digits are going to move, uh, let's see, it's going to move three spaces to the right. So one, two, three, it's going to move right here. One, two, three, it's going to move right here. And then the two is going to move one, two, three to right here. And then the zero is going to move one, two, three, it's going to move here. And then the seven, one, two, three, is going to move right here. So you end up with 70.200, but we don't need those trailing zeros. So the answer is 70.2. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the digits moving to the right.
Now to get this next one, it says the area of the playground is one and a half times that of the swimming pool. So what that means is we're going to do 70.2 times 1.5. And I'll let that um, problem be on your own. You could do that. You don't need my help. And that wraps up Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 18, where we are learning the rule for multiplying decimals, but we're doing it from a position of fractions.